building our models from external data. Okay, uh, the whole idea here is that we're trying to make your job easier. Um, use your data, if you already have it, uh, reuse it basically to build your model. Um, so a lot of the tools that we're going to see here um, focus on GIS data. It doesn't mean that you can only use GIS data. It's the, the advantage of the GIS data is that it can bring properties along with any particular element. So for a pipe, it doesn't just bring the line. It tells you uh, things like diameter, material, roughness coefficient, any additional information. So that's why we like that. Uh, but we'll see other um, types of data that you can use. Um, OK, so some of the tools that we're going to be learning about uh, are shown here. Model Builder, T-Rex, Terrain Models, Background Files, Network Import, and Load Builder. Um, so you can see that if you have CAD files, Excel files, um, shape files, geodatabases, uh, etc., we have figured out a way, very, very likely, 90% sure or more, uh, that you can reuse that data for different pro um, processes. Um, so the idea here is that you get to know what is the tool that you need to do what you want. Um, if you're trying to bring network elements and properties, use Model Builder. If you're bringing loads, use Load Builder. If you're bringing ground elevation data, you can use either T-Rex or another tool called Terrain Models. Okay, I already mentioned why we prefer GIS, um, but if you have CAD, you can also bring CAD. Uh, GIS is preferred because you can assign attribute data. Um, there's a lot of data in your GIS that you might not necessarily need for your model. Uh, you could bring it if you wanted to, uh, like uh, year installed, um, soil maps, you know. So that's why we don't bring all the GIS, we just take what we need from it. Okay, so geospatial data comes in different flavors. Um, the formats that you typically find are vector, raster, or tin. Vector could be a point, line, or polygon. Raster looks like that. Grids, uh, things like digital elevation models uh, fall in that category. Uh, or it could be tin formats, which are triangulated irregular networks, uh, typically representing surface data. Okay. We already looked at why we don't need the entire utility GIS, which is usually get a copy of the parts that we need. Um, however, there's one, one thing that typically happens when you get your data from the utility GIS team. They'll give you the data, you'll bring it into Sewer Gems, you'll start modeling, and then you'll realize that there might be problems. Um, such as missing elements or outdated information. Um, maybe you model it, you realize that there's some pipe missing, or maybe there's a valve that's closed and it's not showing. Um, so you make those investigations, fix it, and then how do you send that data back to the GIS people? Uh, there's actually a tool uh, in, in, within Model Builder that we'll see that lets you export your modifications back to the GIS. Um, but typically the GIS uh, people will not give you their original source data, right? They just let you have a copy um, kind of, you know, to, to preserve and, and make sure nobody is just kind of randomly damaging their data, right? So if you do need to send changes back, you can do that. So let's see what that tool, Model Builder, is all about. Uh, Model Builder lets you import model data from external sources. As I just mentioned, you can also export. 
the idea there is that you use it uh, at the very least to build your model but what happens uh, in any utility is our assets change right so you build a model today but maybe next year and they replace a lot of the pipes and now your model becomes outdated um, so by creating a permanent connection between them through model builder you can simply in a year from now click update and then the model would be able to read the new properties of those elements. Uh, you could also use Model Builder to send data to other applications. Here uh, I will let you read the different um, types of data that Model Builder can digest. Okay, so you looked at that list, you saw the data that you have. Um, how are you going to do it? Well, it's a very simple process. It's, a, it's what we call a mapping process. So you get your source file, then you do your mapping, which basically means this field over here represents my um, diameter, diameter property, for example, for a pipe. Um, so you do that process once and then again it becomes this permanent connection that you can um, update and import, export, etc. Um, this process could be really quick if the data is in good shape, but if you find a lot of missing data, it could take a little bit longer. So the devil is in the details. Um, usually the source file contains uh, pipe information in good shape. Um, but you need to convert everything in the source file into something in the target file. Um, and sometimes you might find there isn't a good fit. You know, maybe in the pump station file that they had, they bundled pipes, junctions, pumps, etc. So that's what we mean by those details. Um, so this is the whole gist of this, that you do the mapping uh, on the left here, we show the source. Could be a shape file, an Excel file, you name it. Uh, showing you labels, a column named D and a column named C. So in the mapping process, you say, okay, uh, keep the label and D means diameter, C means roughness coefficient. Um, and in fact, diameter is uh, coming in the units of inches, feet, meters, centimeters, whatever. All right, uh, when you're done, it will process it and bring all that data into SewerCat or SewerGems. Now you don't need to bring everything that's in the GIS. You don't need to worry about specifying X and Y coordinates. We read that directly from shape files or even CAD files. Uh, and if you have loading data, uh, there's a better tool. So don't bother with, um, with that. We look at model builder, at load builder and T-Rex in a bit to bring elevation data as well. All right, so there are different. When we have a, a, a sanitary system where water is flowing, uh, everything needs to be connected, right? Uh, but you might have a situation where in your GIS you don't necessarily have um, your manholes. Uh, or, you know, pressure nodes, just the line work. Um, so if you have your nodes, you can specify where they are in your source files, or you can say there, there isn't, and then we can connect to anything that we find nearby, or we can actually create those elements to make that connection. Typical connectivity issues, pipes that don't have end nodes, pipes that do not connect but should have connected, you know, pipes that appear to be connected but they are not, or pipes that cross without junctions. Now for all these problems, um, there are solutions already built in, uh, either inside of Model Builder or in a tool called Network Navigator. Network Navigator can help you find possible problems like nodes in close proximity, uh, two other pipes or other nodes. You can quickly find any orphan node that not, that's not connected to anything. 
uh, or if there's a, an element that has a message from a previous run, you can see that as well. Um, if you had any say in how your GIS source data gets put together, um, keep in mind to always snap pipe ends to something. Uh, make sure that the element labeling uh, makes sense, that there are no duplicates. Uh, if you have service lines, you can use different layers or in GIS terminology, terminology uh, feature classes because you might not want to bring those. Um, or if you do decide to bring them as laterals, you can from their own uh, feature class. So basically keep everything in their own layer or feature class to make the mapping process easy on you. All right, we're going to see in the workshop how this is done, so I'm not going to really spend too much time um, taking you here step by step. Um, just to um, show you this one is important uh, to make sure that you do have everything connected. Um, first of all, set the right units, and also if you want Monobuilder to create nodes, go ahead and click that or if you're pretty certain that the nodes are there, but maybe they're not snapped together. So have it established the connectivity by looking around the end of your pipes um, as well. All right, we're gonna go through all these uh, one by one, so I'm not gonna uh, spend too much time just reading here. Um, but just be aware that when you finish your connection, this stays in your computer. So you can use it in the future just to update, uh, you know, reread any changes or export data back to the source. Um, all right, and once you're done with uh, Model Builder, we always recommend that you check things over with Network Navigator um, in a way of trying to clean up your model, uh, find possible things like orphan nodes, duplicate elements and whatnot. Those queries have already been created for you. All right, so you use Model Builder, you brought your data, you cleaned it up, um, but there were no elevations for any of the manholes that you brought or the pipes. Um, well, not to worry, you can use T-Rex um, as one of our two tools for bringing elevation data. These are the types of data you can bring through T-Rex, uh, topo maps, surveying, GPS, um, Google Earth, DEMs. DEMs, digital elevation models, could be grids or TIN files. Uh, also, contour lines. Uh, it is important that you, if you are using uh, this T-Rex, that your topography, your DEM file, has to overlap with your model. So make sure the spatial reference um, is the same as that one of your model. Uh, and if, you're, if you have that uh, and you're ready to use T-Rex, then make sure, again, that you know the spatial, spatial reference and you know what units that data has been created in. Open T-Rex, uh, browse to that file in the units, Specify if you want to update all the nodes in your system or only a few. And um, this is what T-Rex looks like. It's a one um, screen, really. Here's the different possibilities of source types. Uh, if you're using the standalone MicroStation or the AutoCAD interface, you're going to see... Um, the options listed on the top. All the ArcGIS options are only available if you're working within ArcMap. So opening sewer gems for ArcMap. Um, all right, so we'll use Load Builder, um, I'm sorry, T-Rex in a bit. So you'll get to see how that works. Um, sometimes, you'll get data for the bulk of your nodes um, in a contour map or DEM or whatever. 
um, but you might have more precise information for your boundary nodes, uh, like your pumps, your outfall, all those particular nodes. So you can bring the data for all your nodes or just create a set and say, bring it for the majority of them except for this few. All right, or you can later manually change those nodes of interest. Um, and a, a few years ago, we implemented something called terrain models, uh, which is the difference basically between T-Rex and terrain models is that T-Rex, it's, it's a one-time pass and assigns elevation, ground elevation to your node, and then that's it. Um, but the, usually we'd get our users saying, well, what happened what happens if I move that manhole a little bit? Do I have to go back and uh, bring ground elevation for it? Wouldn't it be nice if it would automatically read that information from my terrain model? Um, and that's why we have this tool. This is dynamically updating the ground elevations. Um, and it also, this came from our civil products in Bentley. And another thing that uh, is very handy is that it can help you delineate catchments. So if you do um, stormwater analysis at all, it can be extremely helpful. Um, this is what the terrain model manager looks like. So the different uh, possibilities for files. Uh, in fact, I think we've increased this and we'll take a look at that now when we open the software. Um, but again, remember, it can help you delineate catchments, uh, trace a droplet, and dynamically assign elevation. Um, so when you open a terrain model, no longer do you have just X and Y data. You would now have X, Y, and Z data. Um, and if you drag those elements anywhere on your map, uh, and as long as you have this up update ground elevation from terrain model enabled, the this field, the ground elevation, would be updated um, anytime you move your elements, which is pretty neat. Uh, it also gives you the advantage of seeing the real uh, ground elevation for your profiles. So before, in all the exercises we've done, we've basically seen a straight line between manhole and manhole, but when you have this terrain models enabled, uh, you can see the actual terrain.